Hello once again, and Tony here with a review of Oscar Strauss's The Perlen der Cleopatra, live from the Komische Oper Berlin, which I saw on the opera platform. The conductor was Adam Bensvi. The production was done by Barry Kosky. The sets were done by Rufus Didvistus. The choreographer was Otto Pichla. The costumes were done by Victoria Bea. The chorus master was David Cabellos and the lights were handled by Diego Lietz. I have never heard of this particular opera before and I approached this completely by chance. I was also never familiar with the composer of this particular opera until I managed to do a little bit of research. It was stated that this opera balances Viennese traditions with Berliner traditions and it combines into something that is quite the musical feast. The story is rather basic, with the alpha couple being Cleopatra and the prince, Belladonis, and the beta couple being Carmian, her handmaiden, and the Roman commander, Silvius. And there are also other gentlemen in the mix, mostly involving Cleopatra's advisor, Pampilos, and another gentleman who comes in the mix in the later part of the opera in the form of Mark Antony. So aside from lots of elements of the romantic comedy genre, there are also elements of traditional and modern during the time of the 1920s, where there are some moments within the operetta that is also set in like the 1920s Vienna, which I also found very interesting as it does juxtapose between the ancient history and the history of the 1920s, which plays itself very wonderfully, especially when it comes to the musical numbers being played, as it's mostly jazz with a little bit of opera in the mix. So when I heard that this operetta was playing live stream on the opera platform, I was really, really curious. And after watching this operetta in its entirety, I am more than satisfied. Starting off with the production, I really like it. You could definitely tell that Barry Kosky and his crew went out of their way to do not only their research, but make this entire production come alive in such a vivacious manner. Everything just bursts from the stage, the sets, the costumes, everything. It's so chic, it's so elegant, that I could not take my eyes off of the complete staging. And the costumes were rather elegant. I especially love all of Cleopatra's costumes, as it should be no surprise that she was the queen of Egypt. And I also love the moments with her sock puppet cat, Ingeborg, and I'm sure that this was also the creation of the actress and singer who portrayed Cleopatra, Dagmar Mansell. And she did a very fine job Job, and I'll gladly talk about it in detail when I talk about her. So I'm not going to mince words here. The sets, the costumes, and everything involving this particular production were absolutely fabulous from beginning to end. It was a grand mixture of traditional and modern, and they really knew how to play their strengths to the best of their abilities. Every piece of color just flourishes from the stage, and it is definitely a feast for the eyes, especially considering all the dance numbers, and especially considering some of the musical numbers based from other pieces of work. Like, there is also the chant to the Egyptian god Phtah, which was also from Aida, and even hints and pieces of the triumphal march from that very same opera as well. Overall, they used their strengths to the best of their abilities to make something so worthwhile in terms of the visuals and in terms of the overall choreography and in terms of just how gorgeous and how elegant all the characters dressed on stage. Now we get to the singer, starting off with Dagmar Mansell as the Queen Cleopatra. 
And this woman was in complete charge of her voice. Every time she speaks, it is so muffled and mellow and quite smoky. And when she sings, it is, simply put, one of the most gorgeous instruments I have ever heard. She is truly a vocal chameleon every time she used her voice, whether she spoke in her muffly, dark-toned, and simply put, gorgeous and round, rich voice. And every time she sings, it is quite lyrical in all of the registers and really a gorgeous instrument that she managed to produce. And she was an absolute riot as Cleopatra. She managed to deliver her lines with a sense of sauciness and irony, which is so delicious. She was so hilarious in this part that I could not help but laugh with such pure glee every time she catwalked on stage. She was just so thrilling, so hilarious, and just a pure goddess in this role that I could not help but keep my eyes on her every time she strutted around the stage and opened that gorgeous mouth of hers. And of course, the moments with her pet cat, Ingeborg, were also quite hilarious, and they were pure comedy gold. It was just so funny seeing these two together, and it was just a huge blast seeing the star of the show, Dagmar Mansell, doing her thing, and she did it with such grace, beauty, pure hilarity, and loads and loads of charm. Johannes Duntz was a handsome belladonis, and he manages to really portray this wonderful and hilarious parody of Tamino to the best of his abilities. This gentleman really knows how to get the basic concepts and characteristics of Tamino, and he just went wild with this particular character. He made him such a funny pretty boy, and he made him so charming, especially with his flute, that I could have sworn that Prince Belladonis was an absolute parody and an homage to Prince Tamino from The Magic Flute. And he did it wonderfully. Not only did he act this part with such flawless abandon and such charm and beauty, but his singing was so awesome. It is a fine lyric tenor voice which he manipulated wonderfully and his singing was quite masterful in all of the registers. But more than anything, he was an elegant and handsome figure on stage every time he strutted around with his flute and every time he appeared on stage with such funny lines of dialogue, and every time he opened his mouth to sing, it was one of the finest instruments I have continued to hear for quite some time, and I've seen this gentleman strut the stage of the Komische Opa for quite some time, usually specializing in a lot of the light lyric tenor roles. I would really love to see a lot more of this gentleman in the near future, as he is someone I would gladly look out for. Then we go to Dominic Kuninger's Dashing Silvius, and he sounded like a tenor in this role, as he's kind of always been. He had a very fine, lyrical, baritone voice, which he used to such great advantage, as I've also heard this gentleman sing the baritone version of Hoffmann, and of course, the very iconic role of Figaro from Rossini's Il Barbiere di Siviglia. And what more can I expect from someone as dashing and handsome as Dominic Kuninga? He was a very fine gentleman on stage. He was dashing. He was handsome. He was so heroic in this role, and he just had a complete ball as Silvius. His singing was really well done throughout all the registers, 
and he's actually quiet at home and singing operettas, which is no wonder because he's been specializing in a lot of operettas for quite some time, and operettas are basically his forte, and he managed to use those skills as an operetta singer to such great advantages, and he was able to make use of his great amount of musicianship and great acting chops to bring the character of Silvius to life. He not only played the character of Silvius, he not only sang the character of Silvius, he was Silvius. He was hilarious, he was dashing, and he was just a lot of fun to watch on stage. Dominique Horvitz was a hilarious pampilos. He had a very superb spiel tenor voice, which he used very well, and his comic timing was superb. He was a magnificent actor on stage, and his chemistry with all the other actors was so palpable that you could definitely believe him every time he appeared on stage with all of his co-stars. He was really hilarious on stage, and he was a very fine musician, as he was able to use his spiel tenor voice to the best of his abilities, and he was quite a charmer. Talia Lieberman was extremely luscious as Carmion. She had a very gorgeous figure on stage, and she had an equally light, airy, and sweet-sounding voice, which makes her so ideal in a lot of these ingenue characters. She was able to make Carmion a feisty yet sweet figure, and the fact that she also put in some English sentences here and there was also quite hilarious. Her singing was really gorgeous and well-focused, helped with her silvery, pure-toned, light soprano voice, which she manipulated wonderfully. She was just so gorgeous on stage and so lovely. She was a very precise musician and she was able to hit all of her notes wonderfully with clean and clear attacks. And she was just simply put a luscious figure on stage. And her chemistry with Dominic Kuninger's Silvius was very palpable. You could definitely feel that these two are lovers and that they will do everything that they can in order to make sure that their love is undying. Then we get the pleasure of having Peter Renz, who sang the small role of Marcus Antonius. And he had a very fine character tenor voice. And even though he appeared in the final moments of the operetta, he still maintained that fine stage presence. And he managed to make the best out of this particular character, all thanks to his stage presence and all thanks to his superb character voice. So overall, the singing was excellent. And especially in terms of the choreography, done by all the dancers and all the chorus members on stage who just did their parts with such fun charisma and an overall brilliance. And the conducting done by Adam Bensvi was very well done. So overall, everyone went together in such an excellent way. From the singers, to the chorus, to the backup dancers, to the conductor, to the orchestra, everyone was just so wonderful and it was a pure collaborative effort from everyone. If you have not seen this operetta yet or even heard about this operetta, I highly suggest you go check it out, whether you listen to it on Spotify or watch the live stream once again, or even watch it live. You will not be disappointed, especially if you're having such a ball with this particular operetta and it really needs to be heard a lot more, not just in a lot of the European opera stages, but also opera stages around the world. With such great music and great comedy 
and great singing from everyone, this is something that you will definitely not regret. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in later for yet another music review. So until then, good night, everybody.